Well, it's January 2022 and the COVID-19 pandemic is continuing to surge. It actually, it never really stopped. Yeah. Uh, so you should probably wear a mask. Yeah. Wear a mask. Nice mask over the nose, under the chin, across the face to, you know, help flatten the curve, uh, protect yourself, protect vulnerable folks, protect your families, you know, all that. Yeah. Wear a mask. I think most of us could agree that Nintendo's consoles have become fairly iconic in pop culture. Uh, but, you know, some of their hardware accessories can become even more iconic and garner like a cult following uh, more so than the entertainment systems. You have the Game Boy camera. You have the Zapper for Duck Hunt. Um, you have the Wii nunchuck. These are kind of violent. But then there's others that are just so niche, so weird, uh, that they almost get lost to history. Uh, and that's why today we're going to be talking about the Nintendo e-reader. Winnie's over it. She's just like, I'm bored. I don't care about the e-reader. The Nintendo e-reader was a hardware add-on uh, designed for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, it allowed it to slot into the cartridge slot for the Game Boy, and then you could swipe these cards through it that had barcodes on them. And these cards could do everything from like having special items in games or levels, you know, or it could be entire games. There was a series of NES games that you could swipe on cards and then play on your Game Boy Advance with this weird object. If you want a little bit more on like the history and like all the stuff that was available for the e-reader, uh, I'll link a video down in the description that I found uh, that was illuminating even to myself who had one and somehow missed like half the things that were available for it. And I missed a lot of it probably because my experience with this thing was as niche as the hardware, um, mainly with the original Animal Crossing for GameCube. I loved this game. I was about 11. Uh, when it came out as in the sixth grade first year of middle school. Do you know how terrible middle school is? It's literally the worst and I Basically filled my afternoons after school hopping off the bus Running home to play Animal Crossing. I had multiple towns going. I loved it However, it was like the lamest most uncool game you could possibly admit to playing in 2001 um, in my middle school, so obviously no one knew. Does that mean I'm bitter at all that now, like, Animal Crossing is the game to play on Nintendo Switch and I feel like every single human on the planet played now? No, I'm not, not bitter at all. Of course not. But I digress. Uh, my experience with the e-reader was with Animal Crossing, as I said. There were these trading card kind of things, so I was still young enough that even having the cards Pokemon style with the different characters on it was really cool to me. Uh, and they had these barcodes or codes you could also type in, if I recall correctly, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So it could be a false memory. There was an item associated with the barcode and item associated with the code that was printed on the card that you could then send as a letter. But I don't, I can't guarantee that, but that's what my memory bank is telling me. Um, and basically what you would do is you would hook this up to your Game Boy, you'd hook up with the link cable to the GameCube, this is all very intuitive, uh, and you would swipe the card and then you'd get, you know, cute Animal Crossing things. Or sometimes villagers to come. It was really cool. As I say all of this though, and I'm like remembering everything, uh, it's not lost on me that uh, this is kind of the first generation of DLC uh, in video games that has now become so prolific through um, the industry and also kind of why I got away from gaming in general. Um, so now I feel very conflicted about this memory, both ethically and politically. Although an important topic though, that's not the point of this video. The point is to find out what is inside this e-reader, what makes it read. This is one of the easier teardowns I've done since the e-reader is held together with six tri-tip screws, uh, which tends to be Nintendo's go-to. PCB looks a lot like an original Game Boy cartridge in terms of size and layout. There are three chips on the board. The first is what I'm assuming is some kind of microcontroller that is handling the hardware that's actually reading the card inputs. 
I couldn't actually find any info from the markings on the chip, unfortunately, when I was, you know, searching around. Um, but I did find the two remaining chips, which are for ROM and flash memory. My assumption is that the ROM would hold the default reader program that runs when you power up the game with the e-reader, but I couldn't find that definitively. And then there's a feature where whatever card you last swipe saves. I assume that would be in Flash, but again, don't quote me. I might be wrong. This is what I'm inferring. This feature came in handy for the NES games where apparently those could be up to six cards long, so you'd be swiping six cards and registering that to play your game. And then after all your swiping, uh, you'd be able to you know, play it. Your hard work was, um, you know, rewarded. What's really interesting though is the actual card reading mechanism. It's similar to a barcode scanner that you'd find in your average big box store. There are two red LEDs that flash to reflect towards a window in the swiper. Uh, this data is then transmitted through a scanner slash camera module that is attached to the PCB through a ribbon cable. I was able to run the e-reader uh, in my Game Boy Advance with the back off to capture this. I'm, I'm really excited about that. Yeah. I also thought it was interesting that the link cable pass-through is a bunch of wires rather than a small carrier PCB. I feel like if this were made today, it, it wouldn't be like that. So I'd have to say there was nothing too surprising inside the e-reader, um, fairly standard stuff. I think the mechanism for the reader was interesting to see and everything like that, don't get me wrong, but what I think the charm lies in the e-reader is, is not necessarily the history or the hardware, but the actual cards and this as a concept. Um, the cards were using uh, Olympia's dot code technology, which is like patented or whatever. And so the longer strips on the card could hold 2.2 kilobytes of data. This is 2.2 kilobytes of data, this card. And I just think that's really, I think that's really cool. Like you're storing video game things on here. Like what? That's, that's wild to me. That's wild. I think it'd be really cool if someone would try to decode the data, like how it's getting transmitted in the e-reader, or maybe even try to make their own cards to s put their own data in. Um, that's totally out of my depths. That's beyond what I do. I don't have any of that kind of equipment that you could even begin to attempt that, uh, but I think it would be really cool. Um, I think it's kind of in line with other projects I've seen running around recently. You know, Adafruit's been doing a lot of work with uh, floppy disks, uh, and then Guy DuPont just did this really awesome project with hit clips, making his own hit clip that could then like play for an hour or whatever with his friend's band. I think that's really cool. I had hit clips too, really aging myself in this, this video. But that's what's inside a Nintendo e-reader. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.